Hi everyone, this is For the Love of Comics and in this episode we're going to be taking a closer look at the hardcover edition of Jimmy Corrigan, The Smartest Kid on Earth, the modern comics masterpiece by Chris Ware. The title of this book is Jimmy Corrigan, The Smartest Kid on Earth, not The Smartest Kid in the World as I unforgivably said and mentioned throughout my previous video. In spite of that horrendous goof, if you're interested in a general introduction and review of Jimmy Corrigan, check out our What is Jimmy Corrigan video linked above. And with that blunder acknowledged, let's move on with taking a look at the collected hardcover edition of Jimmy Corrigan. Jimmy Corrigan, The Smartest Kid on Earth was published in 2000 as a collected volume after running as strips and serialized form in various periodicals. As mentioned in the What is Jimmy Corrigan video, I feel that this is the best way to read it rather than as an episodic uh, broken up story because this makes it much more concentrated and much more dense than it would otherwise be. And there are also interesting choices that Chris Ware has made in leaving out a lot of Jimmy Corrigan related stories that were originally published in serialized form when putting together this novel. Like many hardcovers, this comes with a dust jacket and end papers. And by removing the dust jacket, we get a look at the elegant and simple design of the book. Right at the center, you will see the superhero icon that is so recurrent through the book. The spine is stylized, but all into color. And the back is plain, except for the border. Upon opening the book, one is immediately struck by the incredible amount of text that's been packed into the end pages, as well as this intricate diagrammatic illustration. You could spend hours going through this text, which is in extremely tiny font, I have to say. And although it's not integral to the book, and I won't always profess I understand what's going on, the wit and the humor, the dry, acidic nature of Chris Ware's commentary, and the arch language that presents everything from a discussion on comics and the vocabulary of modern comics, makes it great reading. It's absolutely unconnected to the story in many ways, but does serve to show you the kind of craft, thought, and level of detail that Chris Ware has packed into almost every square inch of this book. This is also reminiscent of the level of detail you saw in the Acme novelty issues that Chris Ware had put out, where everything from fake ads to letters to the editor would be crafted by him in various tones, offering commentary on comics, comics readers, and storytelling. Turning the pages and getting your first glimpse into this story, the book actually starts out like this, replicating the format of this first story's original publication, and then switches with the second chapter to the format that it carries on for most of the book. There will be occasions in which the vertical and the horizontal will switch, and often we will have panels that are mixed together on one page, almost teaching you when you need to turn it. Chris Ware's crisp and finely detailed art is the standout as you first turn through these pages. The compact form really highlights the layout of the page and the way the panels are arranged at first glance. It's a very unique style and this design and layout perfectly suits it. I usually don't have much of a problem reading this. This text is fine enough, but sometimes there are even smaller fonts used for whispers and it just makes sense that I would be leaning in at those moments to try to find out what's going on. Jimmy Corrigan is an incredibly technical book in many ways and that's not just because of the way it wants to tell a story but the various components that it puts into it. So there are places where you can cut out paper models that build something by taking something out of this and the design of this book incorporates those seamlessly. The rear end pages are similar in detail and tone as the first ones were and I don't know if the paperback edition actually has these end papers. I don't own one so I can't tell for sure but I think the ones I've seen uh, are just plain white on the cover and starting with this page but I could be wrong about that. If you own a paperback edition and can comment on this please feel free to add them to the comments below. One thing I know that the paperback edition does not have is the dust jacket which I've been saving for the end. Almost every single aspect of this book is impeccably designed by the author Chris Ware himself. And the dust jacket is really uh, one of the prime celebrations of how much he brings to the object of the book. It unfolds and unfolds and unfolds to become a large comic that, I mean, I can't even fit in this frame. The other side 
is another large diagrammatic comic. This panel work is something else altogether. It's part of the story but also disconnected from it the way the end pages are. The inside flap information are actually part of panels over here, including little stories, instructions, rules, as well as glimpses into small moments and thoughts. The other side is very similar telling a lot of different stories and arranged in a way that you can read anything first and then follow lines to connect it to other parts. A small but favorite example over here is where you have a family photograph of Jimmy Corrigan's dad and mom and then leading to the kid who is pointed to here in the graveyard standing next to his father, the mother being pointed to a car, an accident and a gravestone which is then pointed to being the gravestone that the father and son are standing next to. This wonderful cover design, again, like much of the material at the end pages and inside the book, is not technically absolutely necessary to read the story, but it does enrich the world. It does add to that fragmented dimensions and stories within them all adding up to a one larger story that the book is so good at doing. This level of detail and this level of craftsmanship is one of the reasons why Chris Ware has the reputation that he does. As you fold it back, you can see Jimmy from here coming together with Corrigan from there, the spine taking shape and the panels becoming once again back matter and inside flat matter. This kind of large unfolding giant comic being the cover of a book was also used by Chris Ware for the cover of McSweeney's 13, the all comics issue of McSweeney's Quarterly Concern. You can see that it's a similar technique. This one in fact is even larger. So there you have it, a quick look at the hardcover edition of Jimmy Corrigan, The Smartest Kid on Earth. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave your comments and questions below. And as always, thank you for watching.